Hey Blake. Hey man. How's it going? Good. I need an expert uh, help from you. Yep. Oh, from me. Oh, okay. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have uh, some students going for Shiai next week, mm -hmm. and of course, I've done a lot of things uh, for them uh, at the dojo. But it's one week, man. Uh, next week, what what else can I do for them? Well, what do they? Sh what should they be doing now? Can you give us uh, some help, man? Yeah, man. Excellent. Uh, and this is probably a pretty common one, right? I mean, when when we've got a shiai coming up, we've done all the kakarigeko, we've done all the sambon shobus, we've, we've you know fine tuned our waza. Uh, right. But when the day comes, guaranteed someone at that event is going to leave their hakama and kakarigi folded at the end of their bed, and they're going to forget to bring it, right? <laughs> Because <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do that. Um, but so the thing is, like, when we talk about getting ready for a Shi'ai, one thing that we don't talk about very often uh, is what's happening up here, right? So the routines mm. that we would normally just take for granted, we get up, have breakfast, we, you know, have a shower, we do all those sorts of things. But when we've got nervous pressure uh, or a competition coming up, it's very easy to forget the basic things. And I think that one of the things that we need to do as coaches is actually, mm. particularly with those who aren't that, um, should we say, experienced at, at going to competitions, we need to help them uh, get their routines in check, get them nice and sort of sorted out before they, uh, before they wake up that morning. You know what I mean? I think one of the things that we can do straight away is get a checklist. Uh, written out and maybe sent out via email or text message, WhatsApp, even print it out and give it to, to people at training um, and include the things that they need to take. And those of you who have kids who are of the age where they go on school camps uh, will probably have a very good template right off the bat. So we'll have things like water bottle, uh, some snacks, you know, bananas, usually bars or, or whatever, spare shinai, tenegui, you know, all those basic things because we take it for granted sometimes. And I said to you before, I went away to Gashku, you know, I would go away to, to Gashku and, and Shiai and I would forget my Hakama, you know, and it would just be, it would just go straight on my head because I was nervous or excited or however you want to frame it. I wasn't in my normal flow. To help people to, to, to go through on the night before, this is what I need to get ready, this is what I need to get ready. Well, the last, uh, the last training, uh, before the, sh the uh, before the fight, fix your shinai, you know. Mm. Um, check your spears. Make sure you've got a couple of tenegui, uh, and so on. So I think you know a lot of people are different. Like um, my my preparation, you know, I is I have to talk. I cannot just keep quiet before shi. You know, I don't have to talk a lot, but I cannot. I cannot just hold my thoughts in it, you know, in my head. I just have to relax. So some people they don't want to talk, they want to focus, they just sit very quietly. I'm not that person. So, you know, you need to have some kind of maybe you you need to have some experience, you know, what what you should be doing before she act. But I, I found out, you know. I don't want to be quiet before shia. I have to relax, and by relaxing, I have to talk a little bit with my mates. Yeah, that's that's my kind of ritual before shia. Man, that is such a good point. Um, as a coach, you know, I, I see this a lot. You see it in in, a, uh, in movies. You see it, you know, when you go down to a, a, a little league game or whatever. Sometimes coaches, or more often than not, coaches tend to have this idea that as a team, because we're all a team and we've all trained together, we all have the same ways of mm. getting ready. And that's just not true. You know, we're yeah. coaching people and people are, everybody is, is subtly or extremely different. And you say that you have to be chatty, 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 chatty. If I was your coach, it's in everybody's best interest that I know that about you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so when we're talking about solving coaches' problems, which is what we're trying to do here, one of the things that we're, 
we're uh, able to do is get to know our people and how they react in certain situations, then we can start to solve problems before they even occur. If I need to get you ready, and you know, most of the people, let's say you're in the Taisho position, and you're Fukusho, you know, you're, you're, you're a guy, you know, he's the quiet type, he or she, you know, I need to consider keeping you guys in your own space, pairing you up with someone like the, the water boy, uh, and have him chat to you so that you can offload and get yourself prepared. Whereas the people who are a little bit more inclined to be quiet, I need to get them aside. Getting everybody into a huddle going, come on guys, we can do this, yeah, high fives and all this sort of stuff. It might not suit the person who's quiet and prefers just to be in their own in their own zone. And you see this with NBA players, you see it with rugby players. Those that have their headphones on, their Beats by Dre, mm. right? They don't want to talk. They just want to get ready and they know what they need to do to get ready. You, on the other hand, who have been through many, many competitions in your mm. life, know exactly what it is that you need to do to get to get uh, to get prepared and as your coach let's say as your coach i need to, to recognize those different traits or those different preferences in the people that i'm coaching so mm. that we can get them 100 percent ready right we recently had a shi and i told before uh the shi i told them don't worry about the result you know uh, if you win you win if you lose you lose uh, what's more important is you go out there and do your best and result you cannot change it you know uh what you can change well is you do what you want to do you know oh can it can i did i do what i wanted to do did i do what i been practicing or i wanted to do strike put them in did i do that you know, if you did that, that's great. You know, it's very important. You know, there's a great improvement. You achieve something. The result, yeah, maybe they are better than you. So they beat you beat you up. That happens. So it's important thing is have a positive, positive attitude and have your own goal. And if you achieve it or not, is most important than, you know, more important than winning and losing. Yeah, man, I couldn't agree more. When I was coaching the national uh, New Zealand men's team, that was pretty much the, the philosophy that I had. It's, it, you know, mm. obviously at that, that high performance level at the, at the world champs, everybody wants to win. Nobody goes to the world champs, you know, not wanting to win. Sure. I understand that. But the thing is that you have to convince two out of three people with the little flags, you have to convince them. Uh, right. You've got the other person who's doing their thing they don't, you know, <laughs> they've got the same goal as you. The conditions, you know, you don't know the floor as well. It might be slippery. It might be sticky. It might be hard. It, you know, whatever it is. There's all sorts of other things that are outside of your control. What you can control, like you just said, is what you're working on. And so yeah. I, I couldn't agree more with that point, man. If you, if you can get your athletes, your members, and yourself as a coach approaching a shi or a grading for that matter with a positive attitude that's like you know what we set the goal today is the day we figure out if we need to do more work and where this is a learning experience it's not a life or death we must win this for the pride of the club sort of thing that's in there but it should not be the focus because mm -hmm. it just won't go your way there's only one person or one team that's going to win the event uh, so right. what else can we take away from it? And I think that's absolutely right, man, particularly when we're working with kids, young adults, teenagers, um, is to reinforce that message. What are the learning opportunities that we have here? Because you might lose, you might fail. That doesn't make you less of a person. It no. just means that we're clearer on what we need to work on here. So shifting that attitude as a coach and enforcing or reinforcing that message I believe, from my experience, and clearly you as well, this starts to alleviate or solve a lot of problems before they begin. Well, good chat, man. As always, here we are solving Kendo Coach's problems. If you have any problems that you would like us to unpack for you, please let us know down below. If you want to connect, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much, Kendo. It's lovely to talk to you, man.